In the previous video, we derived these general equations that we can use directly to calculate the new state of stress when an element has rotated from its original orientation by angle theta. If you look at these three equations, you will notice that theta is the only independent variable. Therefore, these three equations can be considered as functions of theta. From calculus, we learned the concept of critical points, that if this curve represents the graph of a function fx, then these points where the curve has slope of 0 are known as the critical points, and they correspond to where the derivative of the function is 0. And as you can see from the graph, that critical points always correspond to either local minimum or maximum of the function value. So for these three functions, we also want to find their critical points in order to get an idea of the maximum normal stress and maximum in-plane shear stress. Therefore, for this first function, if we want to find its critical points, we take its derivative with respect to theta and set it to zero. From this equation, we can solve for theta in terms of tangent to theta. Here, since sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy are all known, we can evaluate theta. We give it a special name, theta p, because the corresponding normal stress, either the minimum or maximum normal stress, is known as the principal stress. Now we want to evaluate the original function at this critical point. To do that, it helps to visualize this angle to theta p. From trigonometry, we learned that tangent function is periodic, just like any other trigonometric function, and it has the period of pi, which means that one full revolution, which is 2 pi, has two periods. Therefore, within one full revolution, there will be two angles with exactly the same tangent value. With that in mind, let's first assume our angle 2 theta p falls in the first quadrant in our coordinate system. According to the right triangle definition, tangent value is evaluated as the opposite side over the adjacent side. Here, as you can see, we are assuming both tau xy and sigma x minus sigma y over 2 are positive. That's how angle 2 theta p1 falls in the first quadrant. Therefore, according to the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this hypotenuse is expressed this way. And now, again, according to the right triangle definition, sine 2 theta p1 is this, opposite side over hypotenuse side, and cosine 2 theta p1 is this, adjacent side over hypotenuse side. We substitute these in into the original function, and we get the expression for the first critical stress. It could be either a minimum or a maximum normal stress. Since I mentioned tangent function is periodic with a period of pi, therefore, within the four quadrants in our coordinate system, there will be another angle with exactly the same tangent value and that angle should fall in quadrant 3. As you can see, this new angle 2 theta p2 equals to 2 theta p1 from the previous slide plus 180 degree or plus pi. And in this case, tangent 2 theta p2 is evaluated according to this reference right triangle as negative tau xy over negative sigma x minus sigma y over 2 the two negative signs cancel out. Therefore, tangent 2 theta p2 is also positive, exactly the same as before. And now, sine 2 theta p2 is negative tau over the hypotenuse side, and cosine 2 theta p2 is negative sigma x minus sigma y over 2 over the hypotenuse side. Therefore, substitute these into the original function, we get the expression for the second principal normal stress. Now, don't forget, this analysis applies to when tangent 2 theta p is negative as well. In that case, we will be looking at the two angles that belong to quadrant 2 and 4, respectively. But the expressions derived will be exactly the same. On the other hand, 
At these two critical points, you can try to evaluate the associated in-plane shear stress, and in either case, this shear stress will be zero. As a summary, for the state of stress of an element within a specified plane, we can determine its principal stresses within this plane by rotating this element by an angle of theta p1 or theta p2. The difference between these two angles is 90 degree, and these two angles can both be evaluated from this equation. For either orientation, there will only be two pairs of normal stresses with no shear stress. And these two pairs of normal stresses can be evaluated by this equation. One of the normal stress will be the maximum stress, and the other will be the minimum stress. And again, these two normal stress are known as the principal stresses. Now we're going to apply the same analysis to this shear stress function. Again, we want to find the critical shear stress values. We take the derivative of this function with respect to theta, set it to be zero, and solve for theta in terms of tangent to theta. Subscript s here represents shear stress, and again, we want to visualize this angle to theta s. And again, within the four quadrants of our coordinate system, there will be two angles with exactly the same tangent value. So first, let's assume our first angle to theta s1 belongs to the second quadrant. Using this reference right triangle, we can find sine to theta s1 as well as cosine to theta s1. Therefore, we substitute these two equations into the original function and solve for tau s1 to be this expression. Now for the second situation, angle to theta s2 must be in quadrant four. Once again, two theta s2 equals to two theta s1 plus 180 degree. In other words, theta s2 equals to theta s1, again, plus 90 degree. According to this reference right triangle, we can determine again sine 2 theta s2 and cosine 2 theta s2, substitute these two in the original function, and evaluate the second critical shear stress value. Don't forget, once again, the same analysis can be applied to two angles that belong to quadrant 1 and 3, respectively. And we can derive the same equations. Once again, for the critical points of the shear stress function, you can try to evaluate the corresponding normal stress values. And for the two critical points, the normal stress values are the same, which equals to simply the average normal stress value. As a similar summary, for an element with a given planar state of stress, its maximum in-plane shear stress can be achieved by orienting this element by an angle theta s1 or theta s2. Again, the difference between these two angles is 90 degree. These two angles can be evaluated from this equation, and in either orientation, the normal stress is the same on all four sides of this element, and that normal stress equals to the average normal stress of sigma x and sigma y. Also, in either orientation, the maximum shear stress has the same absolute value. It is, however, either positive or negative, depending on the orientation. But we know that the positive or negative sign only indicates the difference in the direction with respect to the given coordinate system. If we summarize the equations for both principal stresses and the maximum in-plane shear stress, you might notice that the two principal stresses simply equal to the average normal stress plus or minus the absolute value of the maximum in-plane shear stress. Let's look at this example. For this given planar state of stress, we need to determine the principal stresses and the maximum in-plane shear stress of this element. From the given xy coordinate system, we can read that the original sigma x is negative 40, sigma y 70, tau xy negative 50, all in the units of megapascal. Let's look at the principal stresses first. We can determine the orientation from this equation that tangent to theta p equals to, substituting all the values, 
zero point nine oh nine. Now, when you use your calculator to determine inverse trigonometry, you might already know that you can only get one angle back. Like in this case, if you use your calculator to evaluate one half inverse tangent zero point nine oh nine, you can only get one result, which is twenty one point one degree. Using this angle, we can calculate two critical stresses, either 89.3 megapascal or negative 59.3 megapascal. The question is, at this orientation, which stress is which? The fastest way to determine that is probably by using the general equation and substituting theta p1 equals to 21.1 degree into the general equation and calculate that sigma x prime equals to negative 59.3 megapascal. Now we know for sure that at this orientation, the principal stresses are 89.3 megapascal and 59.3 megapascal oriented this way, and also the associated shear stress is zero. Now let's look at the maximum in-plane shear stress, we first determine the orientation from this equation. Then we can calculate the absolute value of the maximum in-plane shear stress to be 74.3 megapascal, as well as the corresponding normal stress, which is the same on all four sides of the element, to be the average normal stress 15 megapascal. Now, if you're not sure the direction of the shear stress, Again, we can use the general equation and calculate the associated shear stress with this orientation to be negative 74.3 megapascal. And now we know for sure the state of stress associated with this orientation. If you plot the results for the principal stresses and maximum in-plane shear stress side by side, you will notice that the difference between these two orientations is a 45 degree angle.